Ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most Avery LR32 here, and I'm so excited to say not only destroy the ever living boo boo stain off of that brand new blue eyes like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1400 ladder. Ladies and gentlemen, Grandpa's blue eyes has come back from being well ripped in half by Kaiba. Um, but don't let uh, don't let this look deceive you. This is actually a Millennium card. I also want to talk about the uh, new Pendulum stuff that got revealed. I'm not even going to try and put it in a bottle and breastfeed it to you as all these ads pop up. As I always say, why do organization? Please cut back on your ads. What what you doing? Um, but I, I don't know a whole lot about this new Perform Age stuff. I know that Plush Fire has an errata. I already read all the cards because it wasn't like a huge reveal. It wasn't like something I was... I'll admit, like, super passionate about. I don't really know a whole lot about pendulums. But the Millennium stuff, I've been messing around with a lot. And, unfortunately, it's kind of dog water because you're playing the five pieces of Exodia, which, honestly, really need retrains. Um, just playing five bricks in a 40-card deck is rough. Anyways, um, the other thing I wanted to announce, too, is that uh, Phantom of Uvale has been confirmed to be in the Battles of Legends set. So, uh, don't, don't run out and get your Nightmare Thrones. Wait until after Nationals. Let the prices die down. And then go and get that stuff. So, as always, before we get into this, I'm sorry about all these ads. I can't do nothing about it on YG Organization. They just have to plaster the whole page with ads. Anyway, this is Blue Eyes of the Heart. Originally called Blue Eyes of the Soul. They changed it to Blue Eyes of the Heart. It's a Dragon Effect Light Level 8, 3000 Attack, 2500 Defense. This card is always treated as a Millennium card. So you can grab this with Melody. You can grab this with, well, you can dump it, rather, with a Dragon Shrine. Um, and it, it, since it's technically a Blue Eyes card, Blue hyphen Eyes, um, you can, in theory, use some of the blue eye support um, to like either add this to your hand or to cheat it out, right? So you can only use the first effect with this card's name only once per turn. You can use the third effect of this card's name once per duel only after you activate Millennium Ang. So it's literally just an adjusted gold, like an evil heroes. You discard it, add a Millennium Ang from deck to hand, which Millennium Ang. Keep in mind, that's the TCG name for the Millennium Cross, so whatever. Possession of this card can't switch. Cool. So little Timmy at your locals playing Snatch Steel can't take this card. If your opponent normal or special summons a monster or monsters whose level is 8 or higher and or with 3,000 or more attack while this card's in your grave, you can send that monster or monsters to the grave and if you do special summon this card. Cool. My opponent summons a Flamber Dragon and I send it to the grave and then they get out two fresh bodies and they don't lose any advantage. Uh, I, I had to I had to make that joke there. I'm sorry. I know that I'm kind of being a negative Nancy, but all jokes aside, does this actually help the Millennium Exodia deck? As we have a Ivory Gentle Body Wash ad. Oh my God. <laughs> Anyways, um, here's the issue, right? With this new Millennium support, just in general, it doesn't solve the issue that you have to play five bricks at minimum, the five original Exodia cards. Now, I have seen some decks in the OCG where they play the Millennium cards, and so that they don't have to pay a bunch of life points, they'll play one copy of the cross, just so that they can search it off of the shield, and then they're not having to pay life points. They might play like a 50-60 card deck so that they don't draw the Garnet, because that's as much of a Garnet as any card can possibly be, because it's literally just not usable. But... I don't think that's the way to go about this. You can still play Red Ox in the deck, which is awesome, because all the Millennium Monsters are Earth Attribute, and Blue Eyes is a Dragon, so you can still ditch it off of Red Ox if you open Red Ox. Being able to have the Revive off of Red Ox is really nice, too. Um, but I just, I just don't know. I think that at the end of the day, no matter how much I've tried to think about this, we need retrains of the original five pieces of Exodia. Like, I don't know if it should be something, like, super good, where it's like, if you have them in your hand, you can ditch them to get either the Exodia head to your hand or one Forbidden One Normal Monster from deck to hand, because then that seems like that could be kind of busted. Um, but it's, it's just hard. It's really hard to make support for something like this. I think at the end of the day, you need to play this as, like, a control deck where... You set up as much back row as you can. You set up an Exodo Flame to nuke the opponent's board. You have the Fusion Monster up, and like you hope that they, I don't know, droplet or imperm you or something. Like, because if they imperm you, then you have to force out the negation from the Fusion, and then they can just talents you, and it's a rough time all around. Uh, they also can't talents this dragon, so. You know, if you proc their uh, talents by popping a card and then summoning this, then they can't talents this, which is kind of funny, but. I mean, that's that's really niche, right? So I think it's really cool. I've really been having fun with the Millennium cards and messing around with them. I don't really think the new Break the Seal Trap helps them a whole lot. 
um, which I'm not going to talk about in this video because if you've seen the anime, you know what the card does. But essentially, it just brings out a second copy of itself and you use the second copy, send both to Grave to get a piece of Exodia. Again, it's cute, but I just don't feel like deep drawing Exodia or searching the pieces is really the way to go with uh, this deck. So it'll be interesting to see what people work with once we get it here in Infinite Forbidden. So now the show finally goes on with Perform Age, and yes, Plush Fire got an errata. So this is not Wonder Wand, Bound Wand, or One Shot Wand support. Cool. Uh, Perform Age, Fire Dancer. So it's a level 4 Spellcaster Pendulum Effect Monster, 14 hour attack, 1200 defense, Pendulum Scale of 6. Get ready to be reading a long text of cards, ladies and gentlemen, because these are Pendulum cards. Once per turn, you can target one Perform Age monster you control. This turn, if it attacks a defense mode monster, does piercing. Cool. Monster Effect. You can only use the first effect this card's even once per turn. If this card's normal or special summon, you can add a Perform Age monster from deck to hand except Fire Dancer. It's honestly a pretty good effect. Any deck that has a Stratos or multiple is always going to be good. If this card on the field is destroyed by Battle by Card Effect, you can target a face-up monster on the field loses 500 attack. That's kind of booty, but okay. Perform Age Water Dancer. Level 4 Water Spellcaster Pendulum Effect Monster. 1200 attack, 1400 defense. Pendulum Scale of 2. You can only use the first and second Pendulum Effect of this card's name each once per turn. If you control Perform Age Monster, you could special summon this card. Extenders are always really good. When a monster declares an attack, you could target one attack position monster. Change it to defense mode. Cool. You can only use the first monster effect of this card's name once per turn. If this card's Pendulum Summoned, you can add a Polymerization from Deck or Grave to Hand. Okay. If this card on the field is destroyed by Bow or Card Effect, you can target one attack mode monster, change it to defense mode. I mean, again, I don't really see how that helps Perform Age as a whole. Pepe specifically, um, but yeah. Perform Age Wind Drainer, level 5 Wind Spellcaster Pendulum Effect Monster, 2100 attack, 0 defense, Pendulum Scale of 4, Pendulum Effect. Once per turn, you can target one Perform Age Pendulum Monster you control to activate one of these effects. Reduce this level by 1, I guess that can help with the exceed plays. Increase this card's Pendulum Scale by that monster. That actually seems really good. A monster effect, you can only use the first monster effect of this card's name once per turn. If your opponent controls a monster or a Perform Age monster is on the field, you could special summon this card from your hand, and if you do, you cannot special summon while this monster is on the field except Perform Age monsters. I don't really think that's a too big of a deal. I mean, keep in mind, there's the, what, Trapeze Magician that is a Perform Age monster, and it's like a rank 4 exceed that was played back in the days of Pepe. Um, having the Perform Age lock on you, I don't think is that big of a deal, because you also just get this card off, and then you're you're not locked into anything. If this card special summon, you reduce its level by 1, sure. Once per turn, you can change the levels of all level 4 Perform Age monsters you currently control to 5. That's actually kind of good, considering um, the monster that you'll see in this support here that requires level 5s, so that actually seems kind of good. Perform Age Cup Tricker, level 5 Light Spellcaster Pendulum Effect Monster, 1200 attack, 1400 defense, Pendulum Scale of 1. You can only use the first and second Pendulum Effect of this card name once per turn. You can target one Perform Age Exceeds Monster you control, attach this card to it as a material. If a card of cards is added to your extra deck, you can add one face-up Perform Age Pendulum Monster from your extra deck to your hand. That also seems really good. Any recursion from the extra deck, especially with um, just Pendulum stuff in general, seems really good. Uh, and then the monster effect, you can only use the first and second effect of this card's name once per turn. If this card's in your hand, you can target one Xyz monster on the field. Detach one material from it, and if you do special summon this card, then one Xyz monster on the field loses 600 attack. It's just another extender. I mean, that's not bad. Like, who cares about losing a material? This card is detached from an Xyz monster and sent to the graveyard to activate that monster's effect. You can target two Xyz monsters you control, detach one material from one of them, and attach it to the other... I can see that maybe being good. Like, if you need, like, one more material to get to, like, an effect that requires, like, three more materials, I guess. Um, this is Performe's Trapeze Witch. So, remember, they have a way to search for Poly. So, I would imagine you can make this fairly consistently. Level 7 Dark Spellcaster Fusion Effect Monster, 2400 attack, 1800 defense, 2 Perform Age Monsters. Your opponent cannot target Perform Age Monsters you control with card effects. Also, they cannot be destroyed by your card effects. Which is, like, really weird. I guess they don't want you doing shenanigans with, uh... The Pendulum, what was it, the Pendulum Sorcerer that let you draw two cards or something? Whatever they played in Pepe back back in the day. Your opponent's monsters cannot target this card for an attack while you control Perform Age Monster other than Trapeze Witch. Sure. When an attack is declared involving your Perform Age Monster and opponent's monster, you can make that opponent's monster lose 600 attack. That actually seems kind of good. This Xyz seems what's, like, super good. So Perform Age Shadowmaker, rank 5 Dark Spellcaster Xyz, effect monster, 2600 attack, 1000 defense, 3 level 5s. Remember that they can modulate their levels, so this doesn't seem like that hard to get to. You can only use the first and third effects of this card's name each once per turn. So you detach a material from this card and send a Perform Age monster from deck to grave. So you get to Foolish Burial a monster, add a rank up magic spell from deck to hand. That seems crazy with a capital K, ladies and gentlemen. 
When a card or effect is activated that targets this card, quick effect, you can detach one material from this card, especially summon a Shadow Maker from your extra deck. Putting another body on the board, especially with the same rank, is just literally the same card. That 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 seems good. Um, <laughs> emphasis on that capital K crazy that I mentioned before. If, if you got to spell crazy uh, with a K, uh, specifically K R W A Z Y crazy. It's, uh, it's pretty good. Uh, if the last material or materials is detached from this card, you can special summon a perform each monster from your graveyard. Again, just like an all-around good card. Like, this this card seems hella good. Again, like I said, I, I don't know a damn thing about perform age stuff, but that just on paper seems really good. Then we have the perform age trapeze high magician. Rank 5 light spellcaster exceeds effect monster, 2700 attack, 2200 defense. Uh, requires two level five spellcasters. Can't be destroyed by battle by card effects while it has a material. Your opponent takes any effect damage you would have taken instead. You can only apply this effect a number of times per turn up to the number of materials attached to this card. Sure. Uh, if this card has Trapeze Magician material gains this effect, you can detach a material from this card. This card can make up to three attacks during each battle phase this turn, so it's just a way to OTK. And we have a new rank up magic spell. Uh, this is Magical Force, so quick play spell. You can only activate a card with this card's name once per turn. Target one rank four spellcaster exceeds monster in your grave. Special summon it, negates effects. If you do special summon one rank five spellcaster exceeds from your extra deck by using the first monster as a material, and if you do that, attach this card to it as an additional material. Second special summon this tree as an exceed summon. We're also getting some reprints, and then the errata we've all been waiting for, Plush Fire. Community's been saying for years how to fix this card, and Konami actually listened. So still, same as it was before, level 4 fire, spellcaster, pendulum, 1000 attack, defense, scale of 5, pendulum effect. It's pendulum effect, if I remember correctly, was always once per turn, um, but it does say here it's a once per turn. If a face-up performance monster monsters you control is destroyed by battle or by card effect, you can special summon this card, then take 500 damage. It's monster effect, which the community said for years is what they need to change. They changed the monster effect to a hard once per turn. If this card on the field is destroyed by battle by card effect, you can special summon a performage monster from your hand or deck, except plush fire. So that is exactly what you needed to make this card balance. We'll probably see this card back at three in the TCG at some point in time. So all y'all performage experts out there, let me know what you think. Again, like I said, a couple of the exceeds seem good. It's going to be interesting to see if Pepe makes a comeback, especially with all the support. Uh, or as my buddy called it back in the day, shout out to my buddy Leaf, uh, PP One Touch. I still remember going to YCS Atlanta and getting my cheeks clapped against uh, Pepe. That was, whoo, I walked in with Cosmo and I was, oh, the whole format changed right before my eyes. My cheeks still hurt from back then in 2016. Guys, let me know what you think about all this down in the comments below and I will see you in the next video.